Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 65. I hope you guys are doing well tonight. I am doing wonderful. Um, Weird week, though. A lot of calls, a lot of interesting calls, a lot of private events, a a lot of 2021 inquiries for the cover girls, um, I haven't, oh, well, no, I'm not, I'm wrong. I locked in two dates. Uh, so we're looking at, I got July 25th and 26th, but I will give you guys more information once the contracts are signed, but, uh, it looks good. Um, anyway, uh, another double, a little, little cautious with the doubles. The doubles can be... A little bit too much um, for those who know uh, Caroline turned ill um, for the Austin show not sure we had just come off a double so well we were going on to a double we had just finished uh, the Houston show and I, I I'm kind of getting to the point that maybe the back-to-backs it, it takes a lot folks I mean uh, I'm not on that stage and I can understand um, what you can actually go through. It's, uh, yeah, you know, you go, you <laughs> see, the thing with performing is you don't know what to expect. You can be the greatest group on earth. You don't know if that's going to be that performance that people don't like. Is that going to be the performance that the music shuts off? Is that going to be the performance that somebody faints? Is that going to be the performance that someone falls off the stage? Is that going to be the performance where Angel totally goes blank and can't remember any of her lines? Um, You know, is that going to be the performance where I accidentally put on a little Suzy show tape? (laughs) It's happened. (laughs) Actually, I I put on a a Suzy show tape during the Angel show. (laughs) So she was ready to perform it, too. She said, hey, you want me to perform? I'll do the Suzy show. I know it. (laughs) But uh, uh, so it can be stressful. It can be really stressful. You know, when we do it so many times and for so many years, um, we make it look easy. We make it look easy, but it still isn't easy. I mean, if you follow my on the road, you see the process that we go through to get ready. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff that has to be cut out. Not you guys will be bored to get to death, but it's, you know, problems with even suitcases. Figure zipper doesn't close, you know. Things like that, because think about it. You're getting ready to get on a plane. You're packing, or you, I mean, you should be should have packed the, the night before. But there's always that instant where you are ready to roll out in the morning. You're already packed. You unzip your suitcase. You put something in there, or you take something out, and then you go to zip it back up, and the zipper breaks. What do you do? How do you pull that one off? You know, we always have spare suitcases, but the only reason we have spares is because the other ones got kind of beat up. So a lot of times there's something wrong with the one before. We never have like a brand new spare. The spare is always the one we had last time, you know, and trust me, we go through these rollers. We go through them. Um, So all kinds of things could go wrong. Um, Planes get delayed. Flights get canceled. Hotels get flooded, Uh, cities get main breaks, like Houston, Houston had a major water main break, Um, uh, anything could go, can go wrong, and then it's not just the fact that it went wrong, you got to realize that there's a lot of people watching you, a lot of people, I remember one time, (laughs) um, I forgot where I was, it was a Susie show, right, it was a little Susie show. And I was always good with my sound. I've never had issues. Well, I've had issues, 
but I've always overcome them. Um, I used to travel with a, a second DAT machine. Uh, those were the digital audio tapes, the little digital tapes that we used to carry back in the days. Most clubs had their own system. They already had a DAT machine, and but I always had my own. And sometimes I would prefer to connect my own and go off of that one. But most of the time, it's so much more easier to just use theirs. But mine was there just in case. And I remember one time I used their DAT machine, and I don't know what happened, but suddenly the music stopped. And I did everything. I ejected the tape. I put it back in. It was a mess. So the crowd is standing there. Susie's standing there. <laughs> so there had to be... I remember this venue being very big. So when I say a big venue, maybe a club, we're talking about maybe 2,500 to 3,000 people, okay? So as we're waiting... <laughs> Susie starts to get the entire venue to start to chant, La Teef, La Teef. <laughs> so, and you know, they did it. And here you go. I'm, I'm already a nervous wreck. And I'm sitting behind this unit and I'm disconnecting wires. I'm replacing wires. I'm taking my, my machine out the box, reconnecting that, putting the tape, queuing it up. While I'm hearing this entire crowd going, la teeth, la teeth. <laughs> and then finally, I got it going. <laughs> so, you know, so you think about the pressure. You know, what's going to go wrong? You, you got to realize, you know, at that time I was just road, I was just road manager. I think I was, I was probably traveling with her mom or her dad. Probably her mom. I traveled mostly with her mom. But, um... You think about that kind of pressure. You think about, well, what if I press play and it still doesn't work? What do you do? How do you how do you get past that? You know, so this is the stuff that stresses, stresses me all the way up to last weekend's show. Last weekend's show, you know, I get very anxious. So we get to the venue. We take care of business. <clears throat> the promoter comes up to me. Now, we already have a plan sometimes, okay, we're going to get there if the show's going to start at 11, we're going to get there at 10, give us an hour to unwind, get me a chance to collect, you know, sell, sell with these people, go to the DJ booth, check the sound, make sure everything, understand the stage, see the path, how do you get from the backstage to the stage. So these are the things I have to do, okay? At the same time, I'm doing them because I'm anxious. I got to move. I can't sit there. And then it gets time to go on. And now we're delayed, another 30 minutes. Okay, give us another 15 minutes. Give us another 30 minutes. <clears throat> you know, so, so you know, so you start to get really, really anxious. And then, and then all of a sudden, you finally you get to the venue, you get to to the stage. I get behind the DJ booth or behind the sound, where, wherever I have to work from, and we start the show. And during the entire show. For each and every song, I pray. Seriously, I pray. Now we do, I think eight songs, eight, sometimes nine songs. So that's a lot of time to screw up. It's a lot of time. Now, of course, if you screw up, if you if you have to screw up somewhere, if the tape has to, it's not tape, guys, it's MP3, but I'll say tape anyway, because it's always been a show tape. But if the show tape has to screw up at any point, let it be at the very end. Because if anything, Angel Acapella show me, you know, and we already went through most of it. Now, if it falls apart by the second song, we can't go and do seven acapellas. That's not going to work out. That's not going to... The fans are not going to go for that. The promoter's going to have an issue. We're going to have problems, you know? So, now, I always have backups on my music. So, if it gets that severe, then it's going to be the fault of the venue. It'll be their fault. Because if they say, okay, this isn't working, this MP3, okay, cool, not a problem. I got another one. Here's another, I got either a flash drive, or I can just send you this file, or I have a file up on my, uh, my Google Drive. So... 
But if we put that through and it still doesn't work, it's not my, it's not me. It's, it's them. It's their system. And at that point, they're responsible. Now, I never want to have a promoter take a loss. I don't, I don't do that. A lot of, and there are artists that do it. Unfortunately, I, I think it's, I don't think it's good. It's good business, you know. The promoter booked you because they want to have a great performance, and you should be grateful that they're booking you. Okay, why give them hell? Why put them through it? If there's a problem with the sound, work together. Work together to try to make it work. Fix it, you know, and um, and and then and then come and then rock the house. And and you know what? The promoter wins. Uh, the artist wins. You win as a manager because you know you're. Remember, I mentioned this before. You're a problem solver. You're gonna run through problems probably throughout the throughout the trip. So you have to be able to get through that. Now I've seen. Now I'm a manager, but I also operate as a road manager because I'm the one on the road. Now there are managers that do not travel with their artists. They send road managers with them. I road manage my own acts. I only have two right now. I, I used to have three. Um, I used to have four actually. So I used to do Angel OCG, Original Cover Girls, SAL, a Little Susie. Okay, uh, but I was also the agent, the exclusive agent. So I had, I knew how to manipulate it so these shows don't overlap. So it's not a problem. So I had a ton of control. I was maintained a ton of control of my acts and our touring schedule. So that made life a lot easier. Um, but the, the key is is to work with your promoters together, you know, because you want what the ultimate goal is a great show. It's a great show. So, but, um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, today also, um, I started editing the on the road video for, uh, Austin, uh, no, for the Houston show from last week. So, guys, man, I, I gotta be, I gotta be real, man. I gotta lose weight, man. <laughs> I've been saying that shit for like 15 years, <laughs> you know. And it's so crazy because I'm on video a lot. I'm on video a lot. Like for someone, man, who is not comfortable with the way he looks, man. I, sh- I sure as hell on a lot of damn videos, <laughs> man. So. Um, and it's so crazy because I try not, when I take the camera, my hand camera on the road, um, I try not to be intrusive with the camera. Sometimes I'm going through uh, ticketing or maybe I'm talking to somebody. I don't like to always hold the camera up in somebody's face. I kind of put it down. Sometimes I might just get some audio. Um, and for some reason, man, I always catch myself in this weird, unusual, kind of screwed up angle. It's always from from the freaking, from the waist up. That's a bad angle for me, man. For real. Think about it. The closest thing to the camera, to the lens is my belly, man. Yo, like, okay, I'm a big dude, but that shit, like, exaggerates it, man. For real. Like, I look, I'm like, what the hell? Wow. What was I thinking? What did I do? So, man, I need to start. I need to get me a selfie stick, a longer, so I can hold it up above me. <laughs> Let my head look big, you know? But, uh, but yeah, so, and, and you know, I, I keep a lot of the footage, man, because, you know what? I, I deserve that shit, <laughs> for real, <laughs> you know? Uh, starting January of this year, we're supposed to go back to the gym and start hitting the treadmill, and, of course... I found a hundred excuses of why I couldn't do it right now. I got to do some editing. I got to finish these books. I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh, man, there's no excuse for real. You know, I'm getting a little concerned. I'm 53 years old. I get this really nasty allergy cough that sometimes sounds like I got the the corona, the corona virus and shit. But, it, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm fine. I don't feel sick, you know. Um, I've had this cough like forever, but I can tell when I get in, when I get it bad. And there's a lot of times when I step outside, I never got this before. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, my nephew keeps saying, oh, you need an allergist, man. Go to the allergist, man. Come on, man. I don't go get physicals, man. I don't go to, I don't go to the dentist. Then I'm going to go to the allergist. I'm going to be like, yeah, okay. I'll use some Vicks. Vicks cures everything. <laughs> Just put a little Vicks on my chest. I'll be good. I'll be good to go. I'm Puerto Rican, man. That's how we do it. 
I didn't grow up going to doctors. I didn't grow up going to dentists. I mean, I went, but never really had to. My, neither was my mother, my kids. You know, Erica loves the, you know, Erica's in her glory because she works at a hospital in the army in Germany. <laughs> so that girl goes to the hospital. She goes to the doctor for everything. And I'm glad she does, you know. Adam's a little bit more like me. He'll wait till the last minute, you know. But, you know, I don't, I'm not uh, against it, you know. Um, I just didn't grow up with that. Like, my mother didn't rush us to the doctor for every little reason. Uh, part of it could have been money. Not that she didn't have insurance, because she always had a good job and she always had insurance, but we didn't have a car. Think about it. So we didn't have a car. So for her to take me to the doctor for every little thing meant a, a, a bus. When we lived, when I was little, a bus, a train, and some walking through the ghetto, or a cab, which most of the time she could not afford. So, you know, at one point I was like, you know, how come she never took me to the to the doctor that much? Like, I don't really remember. I remember a couple little checkups. I remember getting my tonsils taken out. I remember going to the dentist. I remember one time being in the dentist, so crazy, man. I was kind of slow, yo, for real. When I was, <laughs> I was late on everything. I was late telling time. I was late tying my shoe. I was late. I was late. Honestly, man, I was late knowing my left from my right. I was, I'm telling you, I was slow. I'm slow. I was slow. I'm not slow anymore. I don't know what happened. I grew out of the slowness, I think. Or maybe I'm still slow. Maybe I just think I'm smart. I don't know, because I write a few books. Who cares? Anybody can really write a few books. Maybe that's part of my slowness. Who knows? But I remember sitting in the in the dentist chair, okay? <laughs> so, oh, my God, this guy was killing me. But he told me, if it hurts, raise your right hand. And it started to hurt. The problem was, I raised my left. And... I remember him not stopping. Now, I didn't think about raising the other hand. Something in my mind was telling me that I was raising the right hand. And I, I either that or I was embarrassed to let him know that I, I, I didn't know my left or my right. Same thing happened to me in Mississippi. I was staying there for the summer and the whole family we were sitting, this was the year of the Black House, 77. It was also the year that Elvis died. I, be, I believe those were the same years. Because I remember watching it on TV. I remember me with my with my, my cousins, their twins, and and their brother, and uh, the whole family sitting in the living room. Not my family. I stayed with, this is my godmother, and I stayed with her. She was actually cousins. They're cousins, but she was got my godmother. But um, And I'm sitting there with everybody. And she looks at me and she goes, go go in the kitchen and tell me what time is it. Hurry up. So I got up and I ran to the kitchen and I looked at the clock. Now, not only was it one of those hand clocks, because this is the 70s. I don't even think we had digital clocks. But not only was it those hand clocks, but it was the freaking Roman numerals, man. Like, I, I didn't get it, man. Like, you, yo, it's like that clock started spinning and I started hearing like, like it was getting wavy and, and, and spinning in circles. And I just stood there staring at it. Like, like if the clock was going to suddenly talk to me and tell me it's nine o'clock. I was waiting for that shit. It never did that. And then maybe a few minutes later, I hear my, my, uh, my godmother asking her, what, what's taking him so long? And she goes, are you all right in there? What time is it? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> and I stood there. And I think they caught on because uh, my her husband came into the kitchen. And I guess he, um, he kind of saved the day. And um, he, he, he saw what time it was. <laughs> I think when he really saw what time it was. You know what time it was? It was, I couldn't freaking tell time. That was the time it was, you know? So, but yeah, man, there was there was a lot of situations. Same thing with tying my shoe. I remember being in my mother's friend's house. I was staying over there, and because I used to play with their, their kids. They had a, a boy and girl. And I remember the girl had a friend that I had a crush on, okay? And I remember us running up and down, up and down the steps, and she looks at me. She goes, your shoe is untied. You're going to fall and hurt yourself. 
So I looked and she's standing there. I said, oh, thanks. And I, she's staring there. She goes, well, tie your shoe. I'm like, oh my God. This girl's gonna make me tie my shoe in front of her. I don't know how to tie my shoe. <laughs> so she's standing there. Like, I'm wanting, yo, no bitch, get the fuck, get out of here. <laughs> but I wouldn't. So I went down and I remember, this is so crazy. I remember taking the laces, putting them in my fingers, right? And just kind of like twirling them. Like I didn't tie it, I just like twirled them together. Like, like maybe they were gonna magically just tie themselves. I don't know. And she just looked at me and I'm like, I looked up and she's looking and she could tell that I'm just, I'm just holding the freaking lace and just twirling them in my fingers and I'm letting them just drop down. I didn't know how to tie a shoe. And then she ran off. I don't know what happened. I don't know at what point in my life that I finally learned how to tie my shoes. I don't know or remember what time in my life that I learned how to tell time. I don't remember these things. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm telling you, growing up, man, I was like least likely to succeed <laughs> in life. Anyway, guys, that's it for tonight. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to like. Uh, subscribe on my YouTube channel. If you're listening to this on any other platform, can you do me a favor? Just go in, go into YouTube, and just subscribe or like it. Like it. Just give, give me some of that, please. Um, it really helps me out. I'm really trying to to build that platform so that way I can put more content out and it'll give me a lot more um, features that I can use that I can share with you guys. So, but anyway, listen. Until tomorrow night. Thank you and good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.